Hi everybody, my name is Salvatore Calora and I'm a principal engineer with Cisco and today I'm going to talk to you about using PowerShell with UCS. One of UCS's most powerful features is its programmability and that programmability extends to many different programming languages such as Perl, Python, Ruby on Rails, C Sharp, C++, and PowerShell. PowerShell is a scripting language used mostly in Microsoft environments it's very powerful and very easy to use. So let's get started. So this video is going to cover a few key topics. We're going to download and install Power GUI and UCS Power Tool, which are tools that we'll use to create the PowerShell scripts. The next thing we'll do is verify connectivity to UCS, and then we'll use the convert to UCS commandlet commandlet. This commandlet allows us to take anything that's done in the GUI and spit out the PowerShell commandlets that are used to do those functions in the GUI. So in, what we'll do is we'll make an example of that using a VLAN. So we'll go into the GUI, we'll create a VLAN, see what convert to UCS commandlet spits out, then we'll use that to actually create a new VLAN. And then from there we'll see a full script that's used to configure UCS from scratch. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be using a couple of files here today. Um, there's the Cisco Power Tool, which we're going to install first, and then the uh, Power GUI uh, script editor. So first thing we're going to do is grab Power GUI. We're going to download that. You grab it off of powergui.org and just follow the downloads link and get it downloaded. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to download um, the power tool for UCSM here. You go to the, the uh, URL that you see uh, here in the, um, in the top of the URL bar um, and I will go ahead and push that out uh, on the video. So now we're going to install the Cisco UCS power tool that you downloaded from uh, the developer network and you take all the defaults when you're installing it and now we'll go ahead and connect to UCS using the connect UCS commandlet. Uh, this basically establishes a connection between your PC and the uh, UCS manager instance. So as you can see, I've connected successfully. Uh, the name of my UCS is dccomwest-blv. Uh, on the IP address that I use is just a virtual IP address for UCS Manager. Gives me some basic information about the version, etc. Um, another easy test uh, commandlet to use is the get UCS chassis. Um, so I'll go ahead and enter that command and it'll give me all the information about the UCS chassis. In this case, it gives me the, the name of the chassis, the DN, the RN, um, any kind of, uh, of licensing information as you can see there. So at the end of the day, this is just a very basic commandlet in the set of commandlets. You can, you can get the full list of commandlets uh, available um, in the PDF file that's on the developer site. So now we're going to install the Power GUI tool. Uh, I've, I've fast forwarded through uh, a lot of the, the installation. You just select all the defaults as you install it. Okay, now that Power Tool is installed, the first thing we have to do is make sure that we click on File and PowerShell Libraries in order to make sure that the Power Tool uh, Cisco UCS PS is installed and, and operational. And once that's installed, then we're able to actually use it to, you know, enter commandlets um, here on the on the command line. A few things about this setup. Um, the first one is at the top of the screen uh, is the is a a window where you can enter commands that are uh, asynchronous. So you can enter an entire um, program here or an entire script and then run it. Um, down at the bottom is the uh, the place where you can, you know, there's an actual command line there where you can enter commands one at a time. So for the purposes of this video, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our credentials into the, uh, into the system to do a, a get credential. And so this is a little different than the running than the Cisco packaged uh, tool because when you do a connect UCS it just automatically prompts you when you use power GUI you have to use this step you have to use the get credential because that those credentials are then stored in the connect UCS uh, step um, that will happen right after this 
So as we enter our credentials, it'll load them into that dollar sign cred um, variable. Then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and issue the connect UCS. And what that does is it actually connects to UCS just like we did in the command line tool. And it passes the credentials. And so as you can see, we actually have the same exact uh, output that we had before. So the next command that we're going to enter is where the rubber meets the road, is the convert to UCS commandlet. And that convert to UCS commandlet allows us to load the GUI and actually capture what happens in the GUI. So as you see here, I've created a VLAN using the GUI, and we're going to see the output that is given back to us in the Power GUI uh, command editor. Okay, so as I look to see what was given, you could see right here that the command output, the commandlet output, is what you see here, and it's in its line wrapped over two lines. So this is what you would actually use in your script when you wanted to add this particular VLAN to the system. So let's see what the output is of some other commands. So if I go to the uh, GUI again, and this time we'll go ahead and uh, say clone a service profile. So if I grab a service profile here and clone it and give it a name, it'll spit out in the Power GUI tool exactly what the commands would be needed to do exactly what I just did in the GUI. And there you go. And that's what it is. So you would copy and paste that into one of your programs in order to do that um, on your customer sites or at your own site. Um, doing something a little more complicated now, we'll create a VNIC template. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll add some VLANs to it, make one native, and then maybe specify a Mac pool, and then say OK. And once I do that, the same thing will happen. It'll give me the output right there, as you can see, over multiple lines uh, of what exactly happens when I go in the GUI. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste that stuff in. We're going to go ahead and, and do a VLAN uh, example. So what I did was, rather than doing it line by line down at the bottom, I'm doing it at the top. So at the top, I went ahead and passed my credentials, and I went ahead and did this VLAN setup here. Now, the thing to remember is, and you'll get an error if you don't do this, is you have to make sure that your commands are on a single line. When the command output is displayed in the bottom window in the previous example, sometimes it was over multiple lines. And the Power GUI tool will not will will put in line breaks that shouldn't be there. So it's very, very important to pull any line breaks out and make sure that that anything that isn't meant to be a line break is pulled out. And so um, if I resume the playback here, you can see I'm changing the VLAN number to 663 and I'm doing that on both the description and the number. So that when I run the actual program using the run button there, I type in my credentials and then once we're done we'll go into UCS Manager GUI and you'll be able to see that VLAN 663 is in fact there. And there's the output that I got to show that it was successful. And now I'll go in and you'll see there's VLAN 663. So this is a, a, a good example um, of how you can use UCS uh, Power Tool to use commandlets to um, enable you to automate a lot of the, of the scripts that you write. And so the, the easy way of getting the commandlets that you need is to go into the GUI and do the things you want. So what a lot of people have done, including myself, is I've taken a system completely from scratch and then gone ahead and created all the normal things I would do, Mac pools, UUID pools, etc. And then I just have a simple script that has the entire UCS setup. So you walk on-prem, you put, uh, you go through the CLI setup, you put an IP address on, you load Power GUI, you hit play, and all of the of the system is done for you. All of the of the rollout is done for you. Uh, all the initial steps, and then you could just go in and, and create some service profiles. Another useful place this could be is in replicating service profiles or doing things on the fly, creating and tearing down service profiles on the fly is another really good use for this. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the end. So what I have here is a script called pop that PS1, which is for a customer of mine. And as you can see, I use the same exact um, you know uh, commandlets to to get the credential and log in. 
Um, but then the first thing I wanted to do was change the power control policy and the chassis discovery policies to two link and to grid. And as you can see, I am basically sending these commands. Now these commands I got by running the convert to UCS commandlet, commandlet and capturing them from the GUI. The same thing here, this is setting up your, your uplink ports on both fabrics. So this is commentary that I put in, um, but I did the A and the B side, 10 gigabit enabled, and you can see the port IDs. Same thing with server ports, these are the ports facing the chassis, so I use ports three and four. Um, here's another one where I remove the default pool, which was basically removing it here, you could see remove the pool, and then I'm adding one back and putting in my own UUID start and end. Now remember, I got all of this data from that convert to UCS commandlet commandlet. That's really, really important. Um, I didn't type any of this in. This is all, the only things I typed in were the comments. Uh, th those are the only things that I that I put in there. And the other ones were, as you can see, I said replace XXS with the IP of the virtual. So this is very reusable. Um, I created some RAID policies. Those are going to be the same in every system. I created a device firmware package, and I, I wound up commenting it out later on because this really changes as time goes on, as people have different versions of things. I made some boot policies here. I made a BIOS policy. Um, so these are Mac pools, as you can see. So this is all very easy. So if I took this and pointed it at a blank system, it would roll out all the very basic stuff for me that's pretty much the same every time I go to one customer or another. So if you're a consultant and you're doing a lot of these installs, you can automate a lot of the work. If you're a customer and a user of the system, you can use this to roll out new systems as you expand, or you can do things like I said, create a service profile or clone a service profile or delete a service profile you can do all those things. And by the way, you can get the statistics as well. So there's all the read data that you can get as well. So if you're interested in reading a lot of data and putting it in a database available for later graphing or what have you, all of that's available too. So I thought it'd be really, really good to show you guys what a complete script looked like. And if I wanted to run that, you just hit the little run icon here and it'll go ahead and, and uh, prompt you and you'd be off and running. So um, that's really all I have for today, but it's important to understand how powerful the, the, the power PowerShell can be, especially if you're in a PowerShell friendly shop. There's a lot you could do. You can run PowerShell commands underneath a web GUI, for example. So there's a lot of different things you could do with PowerShell. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of a flavor of, uh, of how to do that and how to get started.